Hey guys, I want to share something with you. It's so funny. I was going through some things and I came across um, this little journal that I had. And um, I normally use this journal to write down like my scriptures and different things like that. But I saw an entry that I had in there that was dated April 28th. And now this has got to be this situation that I was writing about. This is like over four years ago, maybe even more um, that this was written. Let me think. Yeah, it's been a few years, okay? So it's not April of this year or last year or the year before. It's further back, but it's something that I saw. Now I'm going to say blank when it gets to the name of this person. Blank. Because everyone does need to hear that. So check out what I wrote. April 28th. For some reason, I feel afraid. What exactly I am afraid of, I don't know. I took authority over the feeling and worship and praise God. I think it's my thoughts and certain life challenges and feeling it isn't worth the fight. Not wanting to deal with all the emotions raging within me and sometimes not even sure I should be in any relationship. I love blank, but he makes me unsure sometimes. Sometimes he looks sneaky, shifty, like he did when I first started seeing him. I told him he looks as if he has a secret. Not sure what that means. I have grown to love him, but I have my doubts and I have asked God for exposure if there is anything he is hiding. If not, I ask the Lord to help me to love wholeheartedly and without hesitation or doubts. This will take time. Either way, I'm thankful to God and trust he has my life in his hands. Now guys, the Lord definitely had my life in his hands and the prayers that I always had for exposure did come because things started to just fall into my lap, fall into my lap, like boom, 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 just all kinds of different things was happening. Um, just when it, when it, when I said the Lord was shedding the light on things that were hidden the Lord was shedding a light on the whole character of this individual. He was doing that. But you know, sometimes guys will pray and ask the Lord for exposure. When he does, we're going, well, <laughs> or we allow the person to talk us out of it. You know, in Genesis chapter three, the devil only needed to be able to get the ear of Eve to be able to have a conversation with Eve so that he can change her mind about what God had spoken to her, what God had revealed to her and made very clear about that tree in the midst of the garden. But sometimes all the enemy requires is that we're willing to listen and we're uh, willing to have that banter and he's able to change our mind. And so he can use people to do that. A lot, some of the things that I was looking at back here too, is that I'm praying and asking the Lord and taking authority over things and trying to worship and praise. But the thing is, I was in a sinful relationship and sometimes we are praying and asking God for certain things, but the Lord has shown you this person is not for you. This person is not for you. This person is not ready. This person is not who they say they are. These individuals that you're trying to hang around with, this friend, it may not necessarily even be um, a relationship where you're boyfriend, girlfriend, or dating, or whatever it may be. It could be your friends. It could be somebody that you're very close to. It could be you're in a ministry, and the Lord will show you. So sometimes, what are you praying for? You know how they say, be careful what you wish for. What are you praying for? Because when you pray and ask the Lord to show you stuff, he's going to show you. But, you know, there are times in our life where we're asking God to help us, but we don't want to be delivered. Sometimes we're asking God to help us, but we don't want to let go of that situation. Sometimes we're asking God to help us, but we are more inclined to follow that person than what God reveals. And so sometimes it takes a very painful revelation or for the Lord to just turn the heat up a little more. And what happens is he, he, is he causing that person to morph and to become this horrible person? No. He's just like, okay, there's parts of this person that have been, I've been holding back, but you know what? You're going to see what's really here. So the Lord allows you to see what is it going to take you to learn and to see. And so I look back at this and I think about so many things 
And when it says, when I wrote in here how he looked sneaky like he did when I first met him, I remember always thinking that about this individual. Great looking individual, seemed very established, um, well positioned, all of that, nice. But there was something I kept seeing just on this person's countenance. And I didn't realize as I'm looking back that I was seeing because my heart was not involved with this person at all. I was seeing this thing and it would always be like, eh, you know, he looks a little shifty. Don't get me wrong. Very handsome and everything. Very educated. But I would just see this little, yeah, this thing there. And um, as I got closer to him, as he got closer to me, all of a sudden I don't see that anymore. And for a while it seems like it's not there, but then I start to see it again, even though I'm now in a relationship with this person for some time. So what does that mean? Why am I seeing it now? Because God is again, opening up my eyes and showing me I'm seeing the spirit that operates through this individual. You know, sometimes we have to learn to look beyond the face of the person and see the spirit in which they are entangled, the spirit in which they operate. Because when we sin and we do what we want to do, there's a spirit that just connect that just connects itself to us. And that's what it was. And so I reached this place in my life that I realized, look, something's going on. I'm feeling fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And it wasn't fear of him. I've never felt threatened by him in any way, but that's the nature of when you're not, when you're out of God's will, you're going to feel afraid. And that's the nature of the enemy to make you feel uncertain and scared. And when you're in a relationship where there are all these different emotions, where all you want is peace, all you're trying to do is to get things on maybe how it was before and trying to come to some sort of understanding and it's not happening, then you're going to have a lot of different emotions and feelings. And what does the word of God says? He will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So here I was in a relationship and trying to do things my way, still trying to worship God, still trying to, to seek him out. And I want to say at this point in my, in my relationship, if I'm, if I'm, if I understand clearly, I reached a point where I'm like, God, I just want you to help me. I don't know what is what anymore. I want, at some point, I just want it out. And I prayed and kept asking God for exposure. But sometimes even with exposure, guys, God knows when you're really ready to obey him. So he'll show you the truth, but then you'll be there going, oh, well. And the person can tell you something else or make you feel guilty, and then you stay. And so God's like, okay, that's not working. Next thing, next thing. And so, guys, count it a blessing whenever you reach a place where God can pull you out of something and don't go back to it. Because there's a lot of people that they got that same revelation. God was showing them things, and they just kept on, kept on, kept on. And the longer that you remain in a relationship or any situation that you're not supposed to be in, when you don't obey God and move, when he say move, when you decide you want to move, sometimes that person or that spirit has now come to a place where it says, where the Bible says that when a spirit leaves a man and when it comes back in, the, their, the spirit that comes back brings more spirits, more wicked than itself. And the state of that man is worse than what it was. The state of that person is like worse than it was. That's what happened in relationships. Have you ever noticed that sometimes there's a honeymoon period and, and even with it, it doesn't have to be an intimate relationship, guys. It could be your family. It could be your, your a good friend. It could be a church that you're going to. Their behavior continues to get worse. It could be a supervisor. And that's because now sometimes the spirits are trying to come in for the kill, trying to set you over the edge, trying to set you to the point where you lose your cool and say and do something you shouldn't do or you lose your mind or whatever, but they're able to utilize this person because this person is operating in a way that that's opposite of the principles of God. And so when they start to get worse and get worse, guys, that's because the spirits that are, that are connected to this individual is now trying to go in and take you to this place of depression, anxiety, suicide, uh, uh, just whatever it may be, feeling hopeless, and that's why they get worse. Now, sometimes, guys, there's people 
that the Lord was telling them to go and what was happening, they don't realize this person that they've been around, whether it's a friend, whether it's a boyfriend, girlfriend, they're going to this phase where now the spirit of murder is coming into their mind and their heart. And the Lord has been telling them, go, 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 go. Maybe family, could be friends, could be loved ones that's telling them something. This ain't right. The near miss, you're in the hospital, everything. They left and you went back or you they, they left you and you begged them to come back and they came back, blah, blah, blah. God saw that down the line, this person was going to get to a place where a, 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 a murdering spirit was going to come on them. And he was trying to save them from that. But what happened? They, they didn't listen. They kept doing what they want to do. They listened to that narrative that the enemy may use that person. Oh, I'm going to get better or whatever it may be. Or anything. So the enemy knows somewhere down the line this person is going to be frustrated because they lost their job or whatever. They're going to be really, really angry and they're going to take it out on you. So... God is trying to prevent you and keep you and keep you and, and tell you no, no, no. And everything possible, but you just keep on. And so these individuals that sometimes have passed away is they stay too long. And that unclean spirit worked through them to cash out on that soul. And then other times what can happen, guys, is that now they decide to leave after the fact. But that door is closed and a lot has changed in the spiritual dimension. So now this person's like, I'm leaving this person now. And then they get caught right at the door. It's so important to follow Christ and to follow him when he tells you to leave something alone. Now, I've never felt that I was threatened. My life was threatened. I've never felt that way, you know, but obviously the relationship was not for me because it just everything that could be wrong was wrong and I found myself just being so out of character or going back to my old self and temperament being in the relationship why because there were certain things that were just repeated over and over again so it was like we're on this hamster wheel right um but when I look back at this there's so many things that I can look back and think of that I'm trying to serve God, but then I was in a place that I should not have been doing things that I should not have been doing as a, uh, as a, as a believer, you know, fornicating for one. And then we're both trying to still be, or oh, we're following God. We're still trying to pray. We're, str we're still trying to do certain things. Uh, no, that's not really going to work. When you're in a relationship with the Lord, then there can't be someone else that supersedes that where you would rather apologize to God and you would rather you rather apologize to the Lord and you would rather you're more comfortable giving God excuses and giving God promises rather than following the things that he tells you and listening to him and believing him. God always wants to keep us from heartache and pain. It, he desires that no one should perish and truly you don't have to perish but when we choose our own way and we choose to do things our way then we're going to have these situations where you're feeling frustrated you're feeling lost you're feeling fear you're feeling all types of different things and the lord will constantly be revealing things to you in my case i realized the lord was pulling back the covers pulling back the covers pulling back the covers until the point where there's nothing left to hide and sometimes when there's nothing left to hide and and there's exposure, then now there's a, a whole nother level of um, behavioral issues that you're going to face and you're going to deal with. And then it just goes to maybe just blaming you. Oh, it's your fault. I'm this way or whatever. But thankful to God that I was pulled out. And I'm thankful that I haven't found this entry that I wrote. Because the Lord will always show you the truth. There are plenty, plenty of people who that you're in ministries and God has shown you what it's about. You've discovered something that is really like serious or something has happened. Something has occurred. It could be your job. It could be someone you thought was your good friend. You discovered that this person was talking about you behind your back. You discovered that this person has been maybe in touch with a person. They're, they're kind of going between you and someone else. They could be cheating on you. This is, this could be a friend of yours that you realize they're, you know, you guys were going to go into business and do some things together and you find out that they're actually 
giving some of trying taking some of what you guys are working on together and giving it to someone else so that they can get you know uh be in a a better supposedly better business opportunity have a better business opportunity you can find out that they're doing certain things you find out the person is a liar you know how surprising is it when someone you respect and you reverence right and meaning you have utmost respect for them and you catch them in a lie you find out they're doing certain things or someone that you respect you want to just get something from their desk and you see that they're looking at you know pornography or something it's very crazy and it throws you off but understand that God is opening up your eyes so you can realize the spirit in which this person operates and what you're dealing with and so you've got to just kind of look at it and it's not about pointing fingers or blaming anyone because I could say you know in this relationship I can think of a lot of ways that I've reacted and I did things that I should not have done it is better to leave it is better to leave it alone, close that door, leave that ministry, leave that person alone. When you find out that that friend is a certain type of way, pay attention to that and stop allowing yourself to keep on, you know, oh, this is like a sister to me. This is like a brother to me. You love them. You have that thing friends to the end, but they are the friends that's going to bring you to your end. Their mindset is different. So when God is, opens up your eyes to things, it's because he's trying to protect you. And it's not always for you to go to them and be like, oh, this is what I discovered. This is what the Lord showed me. This is what the Lord showed me. Because they're not going to get that. And if anything, when you start to tell them stuff, then they try to change and try to alter or try to go ahead of you to tell people stuff about you because they think that you are going to go back and say things about them. We have to serve God with a whole heart. We cannot want God to cleanse us. And to bring us out of, of certain things while we're still in it. We can't say, Lord, I want to be kept clean. But then you still have that door open to filth. You can't say, Lord, show me and bring it to me. And then when he does, you want to make excuse or you're accepting their excuses. Who they are, God will show it to you. And if you're not sure, they'll do it again. More than likely, that person do it more than two times. Or at least twice you catch them in something very profound. Sometimes it could be another woman reaches out to you and she's telling you, yeah, I've been seeing him. Sometimes it's another man contact, you know, reaching out to you like, hey, yo, I thought you realize she's married or she's been seeing this person. And what happens? She can cry and tell you this thing and turn all around and you're going to believe her. And then you suddenly shut off the person that told you because now she or he has convinced you that this person is just trying to break up your relationship. But guys, sometimes God brings these things so you can see the truth. Sometimes you're mad at another woman when she had no idea you was around. He's not even telling the woman that you exist. He's making excuses to her. He's telling her something else for maybe why he can't see her. She's telling him all types of stuff that you know that all you're known about, known as is her cousin, all the stuff you're her dad, <laughs> just all kinds of different things. So God will let you see. God's going to expose things. God's going to show you. He's going to expose to you that jealous sibling, that jealous parent, that hateful parent, that hateful sibling. You'll be so surprised what he's going to open your eyes and you're going to reveal. So when you're praying and you're asking God to show you the truth and to reveal the truth, be prepared for it and be ready to believe him and be ready to hold fast to him and then say, Father, what now? Sometimes people are striking early and doing all types of stuff when God does not need you to necessarily tell anybody what he's shown you. He's shown you what's there. And now you say, Father, what now? And he will lead you to the path. He will lead you to a safe place. So anywho, now I found this. I can go ahead and get rid of it. I don't need this anymore. I probably still keep this journal though because it's very nice. But this part, I will get rid of it. And, but I just wanted to talk with you guys and just let you know that God is not going to have you fooled. God's going to show you what is there, what it is, whether it's an intimate relationship, a friend, a family ties, business, business partners. He will show you. It's just a matter if you're going to believe. 
and there are things, guys, you just simply have to leave it alone. Sometimes you want God, you want to pray for God to change things, but that person is not going to change. You can't really get the change that God desires if you're the change that needs to occur when you're still entertaining sin. You can't say, Lord, I want to be set free, but then you still want to be in a sinful uh, union or still hanging around certain people that's going to lead you to sin. You have to let it go. And if it's meant to be, then the Lord will have that person brought to you the way they should be cleansed, restored, delivered, set free. And other times, you're just going to move on. But what you're going to find is this perfect peace when you move on. Sometimes there are relationships and people and friendships you're holding on to. But guess what? You're miserable. You don't have any peace. You may have a man in your life. Or you a woman. may be still invited to the family gatherings. You may still be in the ministry. But what do you feel? A heaviness. You feel a yoke upon you. You feel fear. You're not sure. And then you have this person that continues to behave in a way that is very back and forth, unpredictable. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And he's not just talking about man as in male. He's speaking about man, woman, and male, female. So if they're unstable and they're doing certain things, they're not going to bring you any peace. Your, your uncertainty will be aggravated. Your uh, explosive ways may be aggravated. Your depression may be aggravated and worsened because the person continues because they're being, they are what I would call demonically charged. They're walking in sin. And so those unclean spirits are continuing to operate in and through them because they have the, they're given the feel, the, 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 uh, leeway to do this this person is in sin this person may be a liar they may just be a cheater they may be someone that's just jealous whatever that thing is whatever works of the flesh they operate in whether it's one or two it does not matter it gives the enemy wiggle room and the powers of darkness room to just play around and do all types of things so then here you are in a friendship in a ministry in a relationship with someone who's double-minded in all their ways one minute they like you one minute one minute they're sorry and they're doing something else they proclaim god but they do something else and then you may be in that relationship you're both proclaiming god or you're you're trying to be godly but then you're engaging in things that's not godly you may go around your family and you feel like okay now i gotta play up to them so you say you're a believer, but now you're getting there, you're getting turned up, you're drinking, you're getting high, you're doing all types of stuff. You're laughing and giving dirty jokes to try to 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 uh, fit in, but you're also being double-minded. So what you're going to find is when you're in a relationship with a person that's back and forth, up and down, sorry, no sorry, love you, but I don't, I won't do it again, but they do, all these types, they're unstable in all their ways. And when you're trying to keep up with them, you're going to become unstable. You're going to become miserable. And so when you're wondering, how come I'm getting worse? Why are you miserable? Why are you at, uh, why you're not, why you're holding on to this relationship desperately, staying in this ministry desperately while, and you keep going in and you have no peace and you feel heavy. It's because it's not of God. And whatever is not of God is going to put a yoke on you. You're going to be in bondage. You're going to be like, they're like the puppet master, putting you through all types of stuff. Where God simply is saying, I've shown it to you. I've shown you what's here. Trust me enough to step away from it. Trust me enough to end this and leave it alone. Why you still have a window to end this safely before things get worse, before get out of these ministries, before you're, you're staying there right now and move before they get their claws in your spouse. And now your spouse, they can tell your spouse that you're a demon and, and this is wrong with you. And before your children get of age where now they can, your children's loyalty will be to this pastor, this preacher and not you. I can't tell you how many people have lost their children in ministries because what happens is your authority as a provider or the authority as a head of house has been taken from you. As a matter of fact, you gave it up. And so the children and your spouse know to look to this man or woman and they don't listen to you anymore. But getting back to the kids, 
Your children has a reverence for them because they're looking at this person, talking you down, talking to you in your way. So they're going to think, oh, this person is of God and this person is stronger than my mom, is, is better than my mom, better than my dad. And so when they get to an age where they're older, they have the, their loyalty comes to the past, is now to the pastor and to the first lady and all of that. And you find yourself being all by yourself and your child being t pulled into this, to this group of people. So when the Lord is exposing things, a lot of people get so scared. Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, I'm so scared. Do you know why you can be that way? Do you know why at some point in my life, even I was that way? Because we enter into ministries and we get around people that take your authority, take away your, your connection to God by making you think it's all about them. So the thought of being outside the outside of their group scares you how oh, it terrifies me that i can really know god alone and i can really be fed at the feet of jesus oh uh, uh, uh. they put that fear in you and you depended on them for everything so let me type this video by saying when god exposes things believe him when he shows you stuff don't waste your time i always give this example this snap that i did just now even that second one is completely different from the first one that i did that is etched in time and eternity. I can't go back and do it again. I've done three so far. Those three have been etched and noted in eternity and time. That split second, that millisecond is gone forever. I can no longer relive it. I can do a fourth snap and this in itself is independent of the fifth because that second that I've just done that less than a second ago, it is gone. It is written in eternity. It's finished. So think about your life. Think about how many years you have wasted, how many hours of your life you've wasted crying and begging, constantly having people around you who keeps doing the wrong things. And the word of God tells us that in the last days, people are going to wax cold. They're going to become more and more wicked. Why is this person becoming more and more evil, no matter how much uh, long suffering and love and kindness you're giving them? Because they're being utilized by a dark and unclean spirit. Whatever their sins, whatever their hangups, they've allowed it to remain. They're weaponizing it now and they're using it against you and other people. So, and the more they sin, the more evil they'll become, the worse their behavior. That's why they keep doing what they're doing. If you think of someone in your life, whether it's a family member, think of all the years that you've been alive and how long they've been doing what they've been doing and how long you've allowed it, how long you've been how many years, two, three years that's gone that you've been dealing with this man or this woman in your life and they're just doing all types of stuff and you're in the cycle of makeup and break up and break up and break up and then when you start getting strong and moving forward, they showing up again and then you go right back and then you're right at ground zero. And you can have these type of behaviors even with believers. God will be showing you. That person will show you. The word of God says, by their fruit you shall know them. They claim to be of God, but they're up and down. You know, they're they're nice, then they're not. And then they're funny and they whatever. And then they fall away and they come back. And the thing is that you never know what's wrong. There's a Jezebel spirit that is really in many churches. And I feel like that spirit really is big and operates a lot within Christians. People who say that they're Christian, not all of them, but a lot. It could even have been in us at one point. I'm sure at some point I was operating in that. You know, just doing what I want to do until I yield it to the Lord. No, being a Jezebel spirit don't mean, oh, you're not in the church, you're Jezebel. No, try again. That's not what it is, guys. But you do have some people, they're just, they, they're rambunctious. They go to places to cause trouble and to look for trouble. And, you know, they walk right in through the door and they want to be right at the pulpit right away with a greasy shoes on, you know. But what happens is on a lower scale, it doesn't have to be a male or a female Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel is different. We're not talking about Jezebel that died many years ago, the horrible death. We're not talking about her. We're beyond her. She's dead and gone. Her soul is not wandering and possessing people. It is the ability, the Jezebel spirit is very manipulating. It is a spirit that is very manipulating, very beguiling. It's very, it, it seems nice. It's religious, wants to be your friend. The spirit will praise everything you do. And oh, you're so great until you make a mess. And the classic thing about it is that 
will not take responsibility for their actions. They won't own up. You know, when Jezebel, let's talk about Jezebel for a second. When they wanted something and when 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 they real they wanted the vineyard and when she realized that her position and who they are was not going to cause this man to sell off his family, what was uh, passed down from generation to generation, they killed him and then they blamed someone else. They set them up. So this type of individual will not take responsibility for their actions. So the classic behavior that happens in many ministries is there's a problem, they begin to make you feel like something is wrong, but they won't fess up. They won't say anything is wrong. As a matter of fact, they'll stop talking to you for a while and then they'll resurface like nothing has happened. It's a lying, manipulating spirit that's very religious. They would believe that God told them certain things about you, which was not because God's not going to talk to you while you're having this odd in your heart against your brother and sister. All right. And or you have not dealt with it. The Lord told them all types of stuff. No, a lot of times believers are operating in a familiar spirit and a Jezebel spirit because a lot of times they have things going on in their heart and they just entertain that. So what am I saying? When God brings exposure, he shows you things. You have to believe him. You can't ask the Lord to be delivering you and you're praying against whatever's going on in this church and you're praying against this and that. Sometimes what you need to do is not be there anymore. Sometimes what you have to do is send these people on their way. Blesses the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful. You can't hang around with them anymore. You can't be in this relationship anymore. You probably don't need to be in that church anymore. So then you're praying for things and it's getting worse, but you're like, Lord, save me from this burning building, but you won't leave. The angel of the Lord have the door open and you're staying in there praying, Lord, let something happen. Time's up, time to go. Remember Job, I'm sorry, um, Lot, they were, him, they were lingering. They kept hanging around to the point the angels of the Lord had to take them all by their hands and lead them out. So guys, the moral of the story today is we can't be praying and asking God for help, but we won't leave the place that's causing us to sin. Some things you're going to have to leave behind and trust God to bring deliverance and to bring change so that you can be brought out to a place where your mind is clear. You can't sit in a place where they're smoking and think you're not going to smell like smoke. Oh, I'm not a smoker. Well, you may be getting, you may be smoking, secondhand smoking is happening. You smell like it. And you get around them enough, that stuff will get right in your lungs. It'd be like you're a smoker too. God is always showing us the truth. It's a matter of if we're going to believe him or not. God will always bring exposure. But would you believe him? Or are you going to let the person or let your own heart and your own will tell you something else? Are you going to be fearful? Because, oh, you're so comfortable. You've been with this person for so long. You can't imagine life without him. The devil you know better is the one better than the one that you do know. I don't think so. I remember years ago I used to hear girls saying this. Well, you might as well stay with him. You've been with him this long. I've never believed that. No, I'm leaving. As a matter of fact, the enemy. I've I've had that. I'll leave. I'm out. I I just had that ability. But in this case, for various reasons. But one is I've always just felt. You know what? I'm always so quick. And I remember him telling me that you're so quick to always break things off and be done. Because to me, it's just better. Just, just leave me alone. But I wanted to kind of see, be more loving and be more patient. And there were other variables involved too, right? But at the end of it, I'm out. I'm leaving. Okay? But it wasn't before things got really, really to the point that the enemy was oppressing me to this point. I felt so such sadness and heaviness. But it made me want to run and get to God. Because what did the enemy want to do? The enemy wants to want me to lose my mind and, and, and probably just die or whatever the case is. Because this channel would have never come into, into being if I had not allowed the Lord to pull me away. And it did not happen right away. I didn't jump from that relationship and then let's start the channel. Nah, God's got to wash you off. We can't be having our little emotional hands and stuff trying to do the things of God. Still bleeding, heart still pounding, and still longing for the past. God took me through a, a period of fasting and praying and seeking him and obeying him and all types of stuff before he brought me to a place to say, now I'd like you to start this channel. 
and reaching out to people. You got to be clean first, guys. You got to get yourself together. So again, when he brings exposure and when he shows you what's there, believe him. Let him take you through the process. Trust him through the process. You know, one of the things that I always say, I'd rather be hurting as I go towards a place of healing than to be hurting and remain in a situation, whether it's with a, a partner or a family or friends or church. I'd rather be moving ahead and healing in Christ, crying along the way, but knowing one day I will be healed and restored than to stay somewhere where I'm miserable and steady getting rained on. It's better to hurt as you heal because when you heal, that hurt will be gone and become your strength and you'll be able to help others and you won't carry it with you like it's your, your precious. You won't have it like that. You use it as a testimony to encourage others and to pull them up on steady ground and they will be strengthened and they will move forward in Christ and be able to continue to reach others and reach others and reach others and reach others and, reach others and land an impact. All right, guys, have a wonderful day.